Hello, today we're going to be going over to Lance 825. We're going to be starting basically over here on this side here. Uh, basically, you're going to have storage compartments at top and below. Uh, in this compartment here, we do have the manual crank for our motorized jack. So if something happens to the motor, you still have a way to operate it. They do actually offer and provide the tool inside to where you can actually put it in the drill. It's located inside the coach in your owner's bag. Our other guy here is going to be our cord that hooks up from our six pin connector and then we have a seven way end on it so you're able to attach it to the tow vehicle this guy is a key to light camper so you have one key that operates all locks on the coach next you're gonna have your little outside shower hot and cold water got your 30 amp power cord basically inside here is where your heater slash water heater is located. Uh, basically, the only thing that I'm showing you inside here is you have like your hose here to when you go to winterize. There's gonna be this guy right up here. Right now it's set in normal operation. When you go to winterize, you would just turn this guy upward and then you would have your antifreeze that would siphon through this hose to winterize your coach. Let's see, you do also have a couple of valves here you can open to drain water. As you see, we got a little water. Sorry about that. A little That's water right. coming out. And then you got a pressure relief valve here for our other one here. Basically, you just open that to drain water out of this guy. We got a fresh water fill, basically where we fill the fresh water tank. Up here is gonna be the breather for your, uh, uh, basically your water heater and uh, furnace. Inside here is where our 20 pound propane tank is located. Uh, it has been filled minus what we use to test the system with. And then they do give you the option to where you can uh, get an outside barbecue grill and it has a quick connect fitting on here to where you can hook up that outside barbecue grill. All right, we're going to go around here to the other side. We're going to have our outside speakers. And then we're going to have our powered awning. This guy actually has a nice one push, it'll automatically go out. And at one touch, it'll automatically retract. Uh, you do always want to make sure you watch for obstructions to make sure it isn't potentially going to hit nothing. Um, if it looks like it's going to potentially hit something, all you got to do is hit that button, it'll automatically stop it. We'll show you that when we step inside. Then here on the back, they give you guys a manual awning. So with this guy here, basically you got this little clip right here on each side that you're gonna push to unlock. And from there, you're gonna take this piece right here and this slides up so you're able to unlock and pull the awning out. Then you got your little nifty wand here. As you see, you always want to try to keep it at a 45 degree angle when you're coming out. Set this guy down here. And basically, you're looking for that flap to be kind of vertical with the ground. From there, you're going to kind of lightly, these have got just a snug fit. You're not trying to over tighten these when you go to retract it in, but just a snug fit. You're going to loosen that guy up. It's going to slide, lock into place. Do the same thing on the other side. And they also have red stickers here that you also can read as well. And then from there, you're going to be ready to raise this guy up, basically. Come to this side so you guys can see me a little better here. But you're gonna have your handle here. Basically, pull and lift. Now you gotta do this guy in a few stages because as you see, it starts creating quite a pitch. If you try to go all the way up on one side and then try to go to the other, it's gonna be a real pain and it's gonna snag itself. So you just gotta kinda do it in stages. And then like when you're on the inside, you can actually see where your last set hole is. 
But once you've got it to your desired set height, as you see, you would need a step stool. Uh, what you want to do is lock those arms good and tight, or the knob, that little star knob up there. You want to lock that in all good and snug tight. Uh, and it makes this guy really nice and solid. Uh, I honestly like these guys, uh, especially, you know, they say you want to have your awning brought in if there's strong gusts of wind. Nice things with the manual awnings. As long as you got that arm good and stiff, I've seen very little damage to a manual awning. And I actually like them because they come in faster than the power ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they do operate a lot faster than the uh, power. Bring these guys all the way down. Like so. Make sure everything is good. We're going to loosen that guy up. There's this little clip here on the side. Push to release. And this guy's going to slide. And then, like I said, you're just going to just till it, till it feels, starts to feel tight and then stop. On the older on the older manual on, you always wanted to leave this guy loose uh, so that this could slide and pivot. But with these newer models, it says you just want to just nice and just tuck. In there. We'll make sure we get a handle on this guy. We're going to push that down to release. As you see, it's got some good tension, so it's already going to try to retract upward. back into place real nice and super easy I really like these newer models manual arms they got going on here this guy will be stored inside there's a little closet area right inside there you can store it in all right so then next we're gonna have this little compartment here basically inside here you're gonna have your black handle for the black tank gray handle for the gray tank and uh, basically you're always gonna do black first Open this guy up, let it start dumping. You got, you got a spot there to store your sewer hose, but then you're gonna hook up to the black tank flush, which I forgot to show you where that guy is. So we're gonna backtrack just a little bit because I actually missed it the first time when I was doing my job myself. Uh, but then basically here, you're gonna have your drains. You're gonna have hot, cold, and then fresh water. Basically all you're gonna do is just turn the valves to start draining the water out. Just like so. All right, so, oh, then you do have a 110 outlet out here. It is GFCI protected. And then if you needed to be able to operate the jacks and the battery was dead, you're able to hook up a charge, you know, you're able to jump it from these points. backtrack here a little bit I do apologize for that but basically back in this back corner here that's why I always forget that's why I miss it because I got it hiding up top here is gonna be your city water hookup which with this you always want to make sure you use a pressure regulator your options an inline water filter then your blue and white water drinking hose hook up to this guy and you'll be ready to use the water system and then the one down at the bottom is gonna be the black tank flush it's a sprayer inside the black tank sprays around and gets that nastiness out uh, I always like to recommend you want to have a pressure regulator on that spigot as well. Um, hook up your, uh, I recommend a black hose, black tank, black hose. It keeps it simple. And then from there, you're going to hook it up, turn it on. You're going to watch till the water starts coming clear out of your uh, clear elbow that comes with your sewer hose. Then you're going to shut the water off of the spigot and unhook the hose from there first. And then hook and hook from here. And then you actually do have cable and satellite hookups underneath here for part, uh, campground cable and satellite. I'll show you what you gotta do for the uh, campground cable. You do have to turn off the TV antenna booster. So next we're gonna have our entry door here. Uh, like I said, the one key operates everything. 
uh, basically your top lock up here. You turn the key to the right, and that locks the handle itself. The deadbolt, you're going to turn to the left, and that locks it as well. This here, so you can actually set a, uh, has a passcode, so you can actually lock the deadbolt. The password here is on the inside for that. And they also have this guy right here that tells you what the code is also. And you got your screen door. Keep the bugs out. Okay. So then we're gonna have our controller. Okay, basically with this guy, when you first go to turn it on, you're gonna push the up and down buttons here in the middle to turn it on. Then you're gonna push the in and out button together for 10 seconds. What it's doing is it's syncing the controller to the uh, motors. You bring it up and bring it down. Okay, you do have to do that every time with these controllers. Uh, there is side hookups here, basically here, so you can actually hook it up to Oh, it's up here. There's the electric jack remote. So it has the cable where you can actually direct hook it up to it. You wouldn't have to program it. You can just book it and use it. But the nice thing is doing it like this, you can walk around the coach and inspect it as you're going up and bring it down. All right, then we do have our ladder to the roof. Basically it's up there for inspections only. We're not trying to go up there and have parties. Uh, we just want to make sure that it's, uh, we're just checking that sealant to make sure that no air bubbles have been created or uh, lap sealant starting to crack as it starts drying out over a couple times after a couple years. Uh, so on your control little light area right here, basically these guys right here are going to be for these guys around the coach. So you got your left, your right, and then the rear. You turn it on so when they're all in that up position, you're getting a nice orange light. The down position, it would all be white lights and the center is going to be the off position. Then this guy here is going to be for just that, for the light there. All the other ones you turn on by hand, I'll show you that momentarily. This is so that you are able to turn on your backup camera so you can have basically a security camera at night. And then we got our docking light. And that's going to be our two white lights on each side of the coach here. All right, then we're going to have the fire extinguisher right there at the bottom of the doorway. And we're going to do some do-si-do -si -do dancing as we start to step in the coach here. We're just going to do a lot of side-to-side -side since there isn't a whole lot of room going on. Basically, you got your door here that... That locks and unlocks. Basically, inside here, you're going to have your shower and your toilet. It does have a vent fan up there. I'll show you where the light is to turn him on in just a second. But basically with the toilet, you always do want to make sure there's water in the bowl of that toilet. But basically you would lightly press on that pedestal to add water so you can do your business. All the way down is going to flush. I always have a good time with those locks. <laughs> those locks are not easy to mess with just so you're well aware. As you see, I'm messing, having a good time with them. Uh, right here, your switch, it is even labeled bath light, so it's the light for the bathroom. So right up here is going to be our solar panel controller. Uh, basically, it just monitors the battery. Um, once the battery gets below a certain level, it allows the surge from the panels to come through to charge the battery and then shuts it off when it reads the batteries are full. Then we have awning lights. That's going to be for our awning out here. And this is what controls our awning. Turn, uh, to bring it on, turn it on and turn it off so then you can control it. Try to see here. Try to create where you guys can try to see that. But basically, push it one time. It's going to start doing an auto. But if you had to stop it, push that button, it'll automatically stop. And then if you're going to retract one time, then it's going to auto retract for you. It's a very nice feature. So there is a couple of stickers in here that does say warning. Uh, this one can actually be removed because we've already taken care of that. All our valves are dumped and I'm gonna close them all off when we're done with our virtual. But then there's this other one here. 
This one is to make sure that you don't use the wrong chemicals or towels when trying to clean the windows. Okay, they are what they consider as acrylic windows, so uh, anything abrasive can actually scratch them and damage them. Uh, but they are actually pretty nice, nice style windows. They get they snug tight, really good. They're really simple to operate. Basically, as you see, this one here is in red. So this here is your fire exit one. We'll basically open these guys up. Open this to wherever you want, and then you just turn this knob to make it nice and tight, and then you keep it open. And then when you're ready to close it, just loosen that knob, and it'll come right on in. And then you just lock, real nice and simple. Your shades are a double style shade, so if you bring it down, you got the like the you can see through it. They can't necessarily see inside unless they're really up on it. And then you have the other one goes up where it's more or less your nightshade. It's really nice. This guy does break down into a table as well. Basically underneath here you would unstrap it. This table would come off this post. This post here will come and lays down on the floor. And then this here will actually sit on these this ledge. And then you fill it in with your cushions here. Uh, while we're down here, you got another outlet. You have the <clears throat> like cigarette lighter style charging hookup with two USB hookups. And then we're gonna have our LP and carbon monoxide detector. Basically, these guys here, if it senses carbon monoxide or propane in the camper, it will go off. It does uh, go off to other scents as well, hairspray, uh, cleaning chemicals, and dog gases. Uh, but basically, you do want to test this, or animal gases, sorry. But generally, you want to test this every 9 to 14 days just by simply pushing this button. You're going to perform a test. And then it goes back to green. Uh, these guys have a life expectancy of about 7 to 10 years. I have seen them go out before that. But if that guy does go off, just do be mindful, of, you know, because it could be sensing propane in the coach. A lot of the times, it's usually these guys got churned on somehow, uh, so it's releasing gas. Uh, the only other item that really propane comes inside your coach is going to be at the water heater slash um, furnace area. Everything uh, for like your fridge is outside. Um, so then, uh, just be mindful if that happens. Make sure the first person out is shutting off the propane. Next person out is maybe trying to open up a window. You're not trying to like open up and turn on the vent fans, anything like that. We're not trying to create an electrical spark. But then get out of the coach 50 feet away for about 15 minutes and then come back in and look here first like i said you always want to check the stove first all right so next up top here is in this guy here we're going to have our little camera for the uh backup camera like i said that's why they got the cigarette lighter guy in here so you can hook it up and be able to power and watch it and here we can actually do that real quick put that guy in and let's see. Oh, here's our cameras. Our little button for the camera. Yep, right there. Give that a second, it's gonna give us some power, and then this guy should come right on and show us the back side. There it is. It's even got volume control. Nice thing is is that the person <clears throat> so when you're in your vehicle trying to back up, yeah, low bridge there. Um, when you're trying to back up. The, per the person behind you, you can hear them. They can't hear you, but you can hear them. And they can tell you about going left or right. Uh, if we got to do some adjustments, things like that. It's actually really nice. Uh, that way you ain't trying to, you know, kind of avoids us being screaming at each other kind of scenarios. <laughs> which we really enough, I actually seen that last week. I'm sorry for what I said while we were parking the camper. <laughs> Correct. Uh, inside here, we're going to have our remote for the radio slash DVD player. Uh, it is connected through HDMI, so over here on the other side, there's an HDMI port where you got to get uh, an HDMI cable and plug it right into the coach and be ready to watch a movie. This guy here is going to be for the fan above the bed. Basically turn it on, it's going to automatically open, and come on. It does have manual settings, things along like that, but, you know, better understanding about this guy, go ahead and read the manual. It does come where you can secure it to the wall as well. 
All right, then next we're gonna have our owner's manual bag. Basically, this has every manual for everything in the coach. Um, so, I mean, they're pretty about this controller here that we're getting ready to talk about, which I do recommend that you do want to read that. Um, but then your steps, let's see, that looks like for the refrigerator, this is for your, for your uh, backup camera. And then Lance has their own manual in here as well. Inside this guy here is going to be that um, tool that you can attach to the power tool for your manual. But I do recommend that you do want to try to read a lot of these manuals just to get a good understanding about some items, especially like your, your uh, water heater and furnace. Then next is just going to be our box for our backup camera. There isn't really anything in here. There might be the tools so you can do some adjustments if you needed to. Uh, these guys here are going to be so that you are able to cover that guy and the one in the bathroom. Basically you got the big one for the skylight, then you'll have two small ones for the smaller vent fans. Alright, watch your head. Alright, so next we get to the fun part here, this guy. Uh, so when you go to first turn this on, you're going to push this knob to turn it on. From there, you got your options of we're trying to heat up the coach, trying to heat up the water. We're choosing if we want to heat it on gas or electric or both, our fan speed. So if we go to first turn this on, you're going to push it. It says off. You turn this guy all the way till you want the desired temp. It gets as high as 86. But to force that to activate, you got to push to activate. And as you see, it starts flashing. Okay, once, it, once the camper is re, re has reached temperature that will stay solid pretty sure our tanks on are off so it ain't going to do anything right now next is going to be the water you have off eco so it just kind of heats it but it's trying to conserve on your propane hot and then boost in boost mode it actually tries to heat the water as fast as possible for a continuous 45 minutes and then it will actually shut itself off in the hot setting, it will just stay in hot. And then from there, you would go over here to the gas electric. You're gonna choose whether you want gas, mix one, mix two, and I'll talk about that in just a second, and then electric one or electric two. Okay, so what the one and the two is, is so the one, it's only sending 750 watts to heat the water. On two, it's sending 1500 watts to heat the water, almost like a, you know, like a uh, space heater. You know, on low, it's 750 watts it's putting out. On high, it's putting out 1,500. Uh, but then basically, it's good. that there, as you see, is flashing. Once the water is reaching desired temp, that will stay a solid color, or that will just stay solid. You always have to push that button to initiate what you want it to do. And then, like I said, the last option is so you can choose just a fan. If you want to turn just a fan on, vent, and just hit OK. And then from there, you can choose the fan speeds. Off. And then from there, you can set the timer or a clock. This guy here is to uh, set a program, which... Trying to program it can be kind of tricky. I definitely recommend reading the manual to do that. But you can set your timer and then you have settings. So if for some reason, so the offset is so that it can kind of do a variance for the furnace, the temp or the brightness, 12 or 24 hours, how you want it to read for the clock, the language, the index, and the reset. I usually don't try to mess with that a lot. Now, a lot of times you'll get a triangle up here showing you an error. And it'll read a letter, a number, and then another letter. That's what you would refer to the manual. And it actually tells you in the manual what that error code stands for. Uh, so that's actually a very nice feature because a lot of times you'll get it because the tank is empty. It's trying to fire on the, uh, on the propane or we're not hooked to electric, things along that nature. 
it, but it lets you know. And that's really nice. All right, so next we're gonna have our little control panel area. It tells us the status of the battery. Our fresh tank, our black and gray. And then here's to turn on the water pump. You're only using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank. And then we're gonna have our radio slash DVD player. Uh, basically, you got your zones. Zone C is gonna be your outside. Zone A is these two speakers here. And then zone B is the speakers above the bed. And then there you're able to change the different modes, AM, FM, Bluetooth, front auxiliary, rear auxiliary, HDMI arc, that's where they got it tied in for the um, DVD function, and then back to basically our FM. All right, then we have the microwave, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I do like to recommend setting the clock. You guys go out, you come back and see the time range set. That means there was camp uh, failure at the campsite. We want to look in to see if that was at the campsite or from the electric company. Then we got our hood range, our fan, and our light. This guy here is our stove that you do have to use a barbecue lighter to light. Uh, basically, you just turn it to the light function and then use that lighter to light it. Next, we got the fridge. With this guy, basically, you have a couple of different options. So right now, when it's an auto, it's always looking for 110. If you unplug, it'll switch over to propane. If it doesn't sense propane, then it would actually switch over to uh, 12 volt DC. Uh, it's got that setting there. Turn it off auto. It's automatically going to swap the gas, but you can actually change it to DC if you wanted to. And then you got your on and off. And then you're able to adjust the uh, setting to the temperature right here on this side. To open it, you lift this guy and it pulls open. You got your freezer up top. Then down below here is going to be our fuse panel box. Inside this guy here, everything that runs off of 110 and has to have main power to work is going to be on the breakers and they do have everything on the side labeled right here for which one is which and then you have everything right here on the side that runs off the batteries the 12 volt or is going to be on the fuses and that also is labeled on this door all right so now the fun part is we're going to step up top here and uh, try to show you everything oh so i'm going to steal this for a minute kind of come around here to show you some of the things they got going on so back here this is where uh, that TV antenna booster is located there is a switch right there you would have to turn off for that cable for that campground cable to come through down here is going to be where you would hook up for the HDMI for the DVD player and this one here is going to be your satellite hookup and then your TV is 12 volt so you're able to hook it up here and then you got a 110 as well and then you got another one of those uh cigarette lighter hookup and usb hookups that's so you can bring the camera up here and you can watch it while you're sleeping at night if you wanted to this guy here is going to be your tv antenna booster so those lights are telling us how our signal looks we are also underneath a steel uh, metal building so our signal isn't as strong all you gotta do is just push this little button here on in on the side you're able to actually rotate to try to get a better signal feed see i just got a little better there that's actually kind of nice that does have a tendency to get a little annoying you can actually just hit this to turn this switch on the side to turn that off and then you got storage up here uh, this is going to be another one of those fire exit windows and then these lights here uh, basically, there's a switch on the back side. When you push it the first time, it's going to light up blue. When you push that button the second time, it'll light the whole light up. And then to turn these guys on manually, that switch right here on the side. All right. So now we're going to hand back. Hello again. Good to see you. <laughs> so I'll come down here real quick, and I'll show you our TV. Got the grab remote for our head top there. Basically, you got your options here to where you can use the TV. You can also use it for the DVD player. 
but then hit your power button in the center and turn it on. And basically we picked up the local channels close to the St. Louis area. So when you guys get to a new area, you want to scan for channels, basically you push the menu button. I like to push the arrow key back one time. From there you're going to choose either air or if you're hooked to that campground cable. And then you'll go down to auto scan. And then it'll start doing a scan. You'll hit start to scan and it'll start doing that. You will do that anytime you get to a new area. Because you're not going to pick up St. Louis stations in Utah or Florida or anything along those lines. So this piece here that I have out is actually part of your air conditioner. So this is considered to be the filters of the air conditioner. You do want to pull these guys out and check them periodically and clean them. These guys are basically right here on the sides. I already got this side in. I just had this one out to kind of show you. Basically a guy just sits right inside there, just like so. Just like that. And then he's actually going to be controlled by this remote okay basically you got your power button right now it's set in auto but you can change it to where it'll just be just the fan or just I mean it just starts pumping cool air in here as you just heard that speed just change you're able to adjust the temperature it only goes as low as 62 and then the power to turn it off and then give it just a second it will shut off I was trying to remember how to set the clock and I couldn't remember and I just looked and remembered I forgot that this here actually does slide down and come off as well and it does have a couple of different uh, settings on it. Once again you kind of look in there it'll tell you how to, you can program it things along that nature. I'm good at trying to break stuff so I'll get it <laughs> fixed. Uh, Alright so then basically from there, I believe we have made our way around the coach. Oh, this guy here. This guy does fold down into an extra bunk. That's what this guy here is up here. Uh, remove those guys and it'll fold down. Oh, and then our smoke detector is up there as well. All right, so from there, we have made our way around the coach. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us. We do our best to answer those questions for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.